Boulder. It's the University of Baylor Bears versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Folsom Field. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. And if you're looking for offensive fireworks, you probably came to the right place. Last week in their respective openers, these two teams combined for 78 points, while at the same time they had trouble holding down the opponents. Uh, yeah, that's fair to say. Both defenses had a very tough afternoon last week, and Baylor playing Fresno State gave up 611 total yards. That's the bad news. The good news is Baylor was able to come back from a 20-point deficit and finally beat Fresno State. And on the other hand, CU's defense, frankly, not much better. 508 total yards to Texas. I guess if there is good news in that statistic, five plays worth for 187 yards. So overall, they hung in there but gave up way too many big plays. The most encouraging aspect about CU's win over Texas last week probably was the revival of the running game. Lamont Warren went for 110 yards, and James Hill added 99. Well, safe to say again that uh, if this team is going to contend for the Big A championship, they have to run the football better this year than last year. Last year as a team, Colorado averaged under three yards per carry. And in the final analysis, it got them beat in a couple of games they probably could have at least stayed in had they been able to run. So Bill McCartney and his staff focusing on the running game in the offseason. It paid off in the first win over Texas. Today, no doubt, we will see one of CU's all-time records fall. Lifetime receiving yardage. Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook about to break that record. I think the best tandem in college football, Westbrook and Johnson, both guys capable of the home run. Westbrook a big, strong target, 6'4", 215 pounds. Johnson averaged 20 yards per catch last year, both over 1,000 yards of receiving last year, and uh, really giving, uh, giving Cordell Stewart a lot of targets. And on the other side of the field, Baylor has a pretty good quarterback in J.J. Joe. He's about to break all of the Baylor offensive records. Well, I tell you, it seems like this guy's been around forever. He's accumulated over 5,000 yards of total offense. He has played big in both games against Colorado, and he's a guy you have to stop in the veer, but you also have to take care of his deep passing. Very accurate in the veer offense, and he's been able to hurt Colorado the last couple of years. You're right about that forever statement. I feel we've been talking about J.J. Joe for the last decade. It seems that way. All right, it's CU and Baylor, and the kickoff is next. It is our Folsom Field on the campus of the University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. Capacity 52,000 plus, and we should have a sellout today on another gorgeous day in the Rocky Mountain region. We'll hit the mid-80s by the middle of this game. A little bit of a wind blowing. Temperature right now is 86. We've already hit the mid-80s. Humidity. A very nice 10%. The wind is out of the northwest, 15 to 25 miles an hour. These two teams are very familiar with each other, especially over the last few years. Overall, they are four and four against each other. Last year's match went to the University of Colorado, a 57 to 38 game. And you might remember the Buffs jumped to a huge lead in that game, 33 to three. Baylor did make it a game in the third quarter, but CU pulled away for that final score of 57 to 38 and CU's only home loss since the 1988 season came right here against Baylor two years ago as the Buffs get ready to come out of the field let's go down to Mark McIntosh Mark thanks a lot Les we are waiting for the Buffs and Ralphie to come out behind the gate here I tell you you're talking about the weather very comfortable down here it's a little hot and a nice breeze is blowing Dave Logan was talking about the defense earlier gave up more than 500 yards last week to Texas this week in practice, talking to some of the guys who play on the uh, scout team, they said they've never seen the defense hit any harder than they did this week. The defense is out to prove to people they're not that bad. Here come the Bucks and Rousey getting ready to take on the Baylor Bears, the 10th rated Colorado Buffalo. Les, back up to you. Thanks, Mark. That's 1,300 pounds of Buffalo right there. You better be careful if you're attached to her. Running at speeds up to 25 miles an hour. The current Ralphie is Ralphie the third. Well, CU comes into this game, ranked 10th in the country according to this week's Associated Press poll. And Baylor, with its comeback win against Fresno State, moves into the rankings also. The Bears rank 24th in the nation. Well, you see the signal from referee Terry Turlington. Baylor will receive the initial kickoff. The coaches 
for today's game. Met at midfield just a few minutes ago. On the left, Bill McCartney of CU. And on the right, Chuck Reedy in his first year as head coach of the Baylor Bears. He was on this staff four years as an assistant to Grant Taft, who resigned the coaching job after a long and successful tenure in Waco. Reedy was... Baylor's offensive coordinator, and before that, he spent 12 years as the offensive coordinator at Clemson. If you're wondering about Baylor University, a little background. It's the world's largest Baptist institution of higher learning, founded in 1845, and they do tend to bring quite a few fans with them when they're on the road. The football program was established in 1899. They have an enrollment of 12,500 kids. And Baylor, of course, is located in Waco, which was a quiet little town near the epicenter of Texas until earlier this year, when David Koresh and the Branch Davidians grabbed the world spotlight. Well, the folks in Waco would like to forget about that and right now concentrate on football. Baylor comes into this game with a 1-0 record, a win over Fresno State in its opener. And CU also undefeated 1-0 with a win over Texas right here in Boulder last week. Last year, Baylor came in second place in the Southwest Conference. They were 7-5 overall with a 4-3 record in the SWC. And CU, of course, also a second place team in the Big 8 with an overall record of 9-2-1 and, and a conference record of 5 one and one. So the Buffs and Mitch Berger will kick off to start this game. And back to receive the kickoff for Baylor will be John Henry and Brandell Jackson. They're two top tailbacks. Also back there, Khalif Muhammad. All three of the tailbacks who get most of the work for this Baylor team are back there for the kickoff. And Mitch Berger, who's one of the best in the business at kicking off, will do the duty for CU in his career. Only 38 of his 128 kickoffs have been returned, and the majority of those that have not been returned have gone right through the back of the end zone. Here we go. all of this one right through the back of the end zone. So Baylor will start with the ball at its own 20. Let's take a look at that Baylor offense. J.J. Joe, who we talked about when we previewed the game a few minutes ago, a 5'11 senior out of Arlington, Texas. Most of these Baylor kids are from Texas. The few who are not are usually from the surrounding Texas states. John Henry and Bradford Lewis are your starting running backs. Kelly, Stanley, and Bellamy are your wide receivers in the offensive line. Davis, Davidson, Pope, Leakes, a very good one, and Fred Miller. First play from scrimmage for Baylor. They try it up the middle. That's Bradford Lewis, and the tackle is made by Shannon Clavell. Call it a gain of two. The front seven for the Buffaloes, Brian Diet, Shannon Clavell, and Kerry Hicks. The linebackers are Sam Rogers on the outside. Inside, it's Knutson and Ted Johnson. And on the outside, the preseason All-American candidate, Ronnie Wolford. And your defensive backs, a very seasoned block, Chris Hudson, who had two interceptions last week against Texas. Collier, Lindsey. The head coach, but also the guy that devises the offense, will try to establish the running game. One, you stay on the field, and two, you keep that Colorado offense on the sideline. So Baylor wants to knock out a few first downs, establish the inside game of the Veer offense, and force that CU defense to make some tackles early. Greg Lindsay made that last tackle. He's a senior out of Carson, California. It's third and five for the Bears. The shovel pass goes to Lewis. He gets room on the outside across the 40 and up to the 44-yard line. Bradford Lewis finally knocked down by Chris Hudson. The 
Bradford Lewis is small, but he's compact. 5'7", 205. You'll see Lewis come from left to right. Two wide receivers to the right side really spread out the defense, and Lewis takes a shovel pass, runs right past Ronnie Wolfork, and Baylor able to pick up the first first down of the game. Baylor defensively with only one starter back, but keep this in mind. The offensive line, all five starters return from last year's team. It was a pretty good unit. J.J. Joe running the option. There's a fumble. And CU has the ball. It's Dennis Collier on the fumble recovery. There's a buff down on the field right now. The training staff is out tending to him. We'll tell you who it is as soon as we get a look at him. Baylor, the Vera offense. J.J. Joe tries to stretch this, but he pitches the ball, I think, a little bit too quickly. Although that was the pitch that should have been handled. John Henry can't come up with it and see you with the first turnover of the game. You'll see, again, let right side, the pitch hits Henry right in the face mask. And Henry looked like he was taking his eye off the ball to see where the defensive back was. Hey, here, the young man down on the ground being tended to is Greg Lindsay. And it looked like his own man ran him down from behind. It looked like Ronnie Wolfwalk inadvertently pushed him down. And Lindsay is hurt right now. Up on his own two feet. He'll probably come out for a play or two. And if he's okay, we'll see Greg back in the ballgame shortly. And right now on the field, the CU offense. Led by Cordell Stewart. The fine six foot three, 210 pound junior out of Marrero, Louisiana. Boy, he had a first half against Baylor last year. He only played the first half because he sprained his ankle. But he went 16 of 17 in passing attempts for 251 yards and three touchdown passes. And right now he comes out intending to throw. So that pass complete to Charles Johnson for first down yardage inside the Baylor 35. Henry Bell the tackle. Colorado comes out first play with the misdirection pass, and I'll tell you, you'll see Charles Johnson just run a simple comeback. The ball gets there in a hurry, but watch his ability to catch it in his hands, and then, as he bobbles it, grabs it on his way down. Both Johnson and Westbrook, the two wide receivers, have made sensational catches during the course of their career. And Charles Johnson just broke the CU all-time receiving yardage record. The ironic thing is it could be broken again today by Michael Westbrook. From the 34, Stewart throws again to C.J. on the other side. And C.J. gets it to about the 30-yard line before Chris Dull makes the tackle. And set up CU's offense for you. Of course, you have Stewart, the junior, at quarterback. Coming off a record-breaking season last year. <laughs> Setting marks in percentage and yards past four. And the rest of the offense, Lamont Warren is the lone running back, Westbrook and Johnson the wideouts, and Embry and Fourier are the tight ends. And the offensive line we'll get to in a second. Right now we have Lamont Warren being run out of bounds at the Baylor 22. Chris Lewis ran him out. There once again, your skill position players for CU, and let's take a look at the offensive line now. It's a young group. Birdie, Irwin, Stoltenberg, Hammond, and West. Not a senior among them. The three in the middle are sophomores, and the two tackles, Birdie and West, are juniors. They'll all be back next year. First down for the Buffs at the Baylor 22. Lamont Warren up the middle. He gets inside the 20, a gain of four. Down to the 18, Chris Lewis makes the tackle. Let's take a look at that inexperienced Baylor defense that gave up 611 yards last week against Fresno State. The front seven, Alexander Horton and Strahan, Lewis, Kent, Dull, and Still. And the defensive backs, Kendrick Bell, Tyrone Smith, Adrian Robinson, and Chris Lewis. You might think that CU can pick on those defensive backs because two of them used to play offense until this year. Second and six for CU. This is Lamont Warren with a nice move down to the 11-yard line. Once again, Chris Lewis, the tackle. 
And he's close to first down yardage. Colorado, again, trying to reestablish that running game. Looks pretty quick to me. More in the single back over right tackle. Once you get past the line in a one-back offense, you are on the strong safety one-on-one. -on -one. And it's up to you to be your own blocker and runner. That time, Warren able to skirt inside the tackle and gain an additional three or four yards. And the sticks are out measuring. Terry Turlington will tell us that the buffs are a couple inches short of a first down. Bill McCartney back in the headsets this year. Elliot Uzelak, the offensive coordinator. He likes to pound them up front. McCartney realizing that last year they just didn't run the football with enough proficiency to win many, if any, games. Passing game got him through last year. So it's third and a very short one yard to go for the Buffs at the Baylor 12. Stewart sneaks it. This is going to be a close call. And the Buffs get the call. First down for Cordell Stewart and CU. You'll notice the CU offensive line with the guards backed off the ball about a half a yard. Again, Elliot Uzelak, the new offensive coordinator, feels like it gives the guards a chance or a better opportunity to look and see as to where they will block. Two wideouts for the Buffs, both lining up on the left, and now Westbrook goes in motion. And Warren gets the carry. He's inside the five, run out of bounds at the four by Chris Lewis. We've called his name a lot on the tackles, and that's not good for Baylor when your defensive back is making most of the tackles. Good job up front. Derek West at right tackle. Fourier, the tight end on the right side. West actually pulls, and Lamont Lord is running downhill. Left side of the Baylor defensive line completely collapsed inside, and there again is the strong safety that Warren is going to have to beat in the one-back offense. Second and two at the Baylor three-yard line. Warren again. Down to the one. Chris Dull, the tackle. That's what you call a dull thump. And this was a scheme that last week against Texas really opened up the running attack. The two-back attack with James Hill and Lamont Warren both in the game at the same time. 53-year-old Bill McCartney in his 12th year at CU with a 75-51 and 4 record. He's coached more games than anybody in CU history. 130 of them. And with two more wins, he'll tie the legendary Fred Folsom for the most wins as a CU head coach, 77. So the Buffs pick up the first down. They are on the one-yard line of Baylor. Early in the first quarter, 10.45 to go. Two running backs in the game now for the Buffs. Warren is in. Alon Warren, who scored three touchdowns against Baylor last year, takes it in now. And he takes it in behind James Hill. Good block by Emory Hill. The lead back able to get into the interior of the defense. And as we just talked about, two back offense last week against Texas. Pretty good. And in the early going here, two or three downs worth of James Hill and the ball. And Mitch Berger's extra point attempt is pretty good. And the Buffs with a 7 0 lead. We have 10 38 to go, first quarter. Well, with two tight ends in the game and two backs, you can run to either side. This time, the lead to the right side. And again, James Hill powers through the hole. Sean Embry, an excellent block from his tight end spot. The Buffs are on the board first. And getting ready to kick off once again. Lamont Warren, the man who scored that touchdown, a six foot one junior, had a bit of a down year last year, just 512 yards. He led the bus, but it was nowhere near the statistical success he had his freshman year when he ran for 830 yards. Well, the wind knocks the ball off of the tee, so Mitch Berger will reset it. And back to receive the kickoff for Baylor. Khalif Muhammad. 
and Brandell Jackson. There's enough wind that uh, somebody's going to have to come over and hold this football. Russ will let that happen a couple of times, and they'll grab somebody and say, hey, you get over here and hold this. And that somebody will be number four, Eric Mitchell. You can see by the flags. We told you before the game started, the wind is coming out of the northwest at between 15 and 25 miles an hour. So Eric Mitchell will hold while Berger kicks off. Muhammad will field it four yards deep, and he is not going anywhere. What a weapon that is when you can make the other team start at the 20 and go 80 yards every time. That last scoring drive for CU, nine plays, a very efficient 46 yards. Two minutes and 36 seconds run off the clock. Boy, that's what happens when you turn the football over, especially on the road. You can find yourself out of a game quickly. In a veer offense, you're susceptible to fumbling the football. The last one, however, really no excuse for that one. J.J. Joe last week, a very nice week. And you're right, Dave, last week it's the turnovers that saved CU against Texas. Baylor tries the right side. Ted Johnson says... Not much, guys. A four-yard gain for the tailback, John Henry. We talk a little bit about the Colorado defense. Last week we mentioned giving up 508 yards, but you also have to mention guys like Figures, Bradford, Renfro, Beekert, Brown, all big eight players of last year, all drafted in the NFL and obviously not here this year. So this is a young defense that still has to figure out how to play together. Second and six for the Bears. The pitch to John Henry. And he is up to the 30. It looks like he has first down yardage. Ronnie Wolf for the tackle. And yes, they will move the chains. John Henry squeezes out the first down. And usually when you fumble early, you like to come back with solid plays that give you a chance to get those offensive linemen off and just power football here. John Henry over the right side. Able to pick up the Bears second first down. Baylor with the ball on its own 30. Only one wide receiver in the game now for the Bears. JJ Joe looking to throw incomplete. And a flag is down. Now I think they're gonna call Dennis Collier for holding here in the secondary. That was going to be a deep slant to the wide receiver. Collier had John Stanley to split in, jammed all the way to the middle of the field. As the officials talk it over, we'll tell you Greg Lindsay, starting safety for the Buffs, is back in the ballgame. He came out in the last series, had the wind knocked out of him. Well, that wind has been replaced. Well, they'll march off some yardage against the Buffs. A 10-yard penalty brings the ball up to the 40-yard line. <laughs> Holding against the Buffs. So call it another first down for Baylor. The middle goes the big fullback, Robert Strait. Shannon Clavel stops him after three yards. Robert Strait is a real ton. Last year, 496 yards rushing. He has 23 career touchdowns at Baylor. He's a hard man to stop once he gets ahead of steam going. Although he's lost his starting spot this year to Bradford Lewis. Strait has not been injured. He just has not been able to hold off Bradford Lewis in a starting position. Second and eight for Baylor. Again, up the middle. The tackle made by Ted Johnson on Robert Strait. Last week against Fresno, Strait went for 41 yards and a touchdown. And Ted Johnson, the junior out of Carlsbad, California, made the stop. 
Boy, high praise from his coach, Brian Cabral, who said he can be better than Greg Beaker. Better athlete, bigger and stronger, faster. Now you just have to turn out to be a better player because Greg Beaker, although he didn't have all of the physical tools, was an excellent college player. Third and four for Baylor. Again up the middle. Straight, stood up. Did he get the first down yardage? Ted Johnson did a great job standing him up. I think he's a little short. And this is how you have to play linebacker when you play against a back that weighs 245 pounds. You have to get the leverage to stop the initial surge. And you'll see Ted Johnson come in and get underneath straight and then pick him up on the ground. Excellent job there. You can see the ball just short of the middle part of the 50-yard strike. And Coach Logan, you were right. They are a couple inches short of that first down. That brings up fourth. And Baylor will go for it with a full house backfield. Three running backs behind J.J. Joe. The Bucks jump off sides. Let's see if they were drawn by an illegal move on the offensive line. No, I don't think so. That's just not a good play. Shannon Clavell, the sophomore at nose. That's the one spot you shouldn't jump off because the ball's right in front of you. Bill McCartney making a case that his boys were drawn off sides illegally, but the official's not buying it. So march off another five yards against the Buffs. And Baylor, for the first time today, is in CU territory at the CU 45. And it's a first down. We've got 7.20 to go in the first quarter. CU with a 7 to nothing lead. The pitch to John Henry. He gains four yards. John Knutson and Shannon Clavell wrap him up. We talked about Baylor's offensive line, all returning starters. Pope, Leakes, Davidson, Davis, and Miller. The smallest at 267, the biggest at right guard, David Leakes, 6'4", 342. Not many Leakes there. Oof. You get an idea as to why Baylor likes to run the ball between the tackles. Second and six for Baylor. At the CU 41. Joe fakes the handoff, throws the ball. Oh, almost intercepted by Chris Hudson. He did a great job reading that pass. Well, I like this young man. Well, he has got tremendous instincts. And then you add to the fact that he's a great athlete, and what you have is a mixture for an excellent defensive back. This throw had no chance of getting there. You can see. Hudson, if he caught the ball, he got one foot down. It's tough to see as to whether he hung on to the football, but Hudson, two interceptions last week versus Texas. He's had 13 career starts, and in those starts, 10 interceptions. And I think teams will soon realize that if you're going to make some yardage, you might want to do it on the other side. The all-time CU record for interceptions is 16, owned by the bad dude, John Stearns. And once again, the two lines go at each other before the snap. Flags are down. And this one will go against Baylor. David Davis, the left tackle. That ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Repeat third down. Baylor's the kind of team, although they've had success the last two times against Colorado passing the football, they have to get the running game going first. They're strictly a play-action type team. You can see on the right side of your screen, the left tackle moves. And that's the penalty. So without the running game, Baylor has a very difficult time throwing the ball. That penalty puts Baylor back at the CU 46-yard line. 6.34 to go, first quarter. It's third and 11. They try the middle. John Henry, if he'd have kept his feet, he had a shot at that first down. Instead, he's down at the 42, and Ted Johnson was the closest buff to him. And that play selection there, I think, exemplifies what we were talking about. Third and 11, you run the draw because you just don't have a lot of drop back passes. The play action in third down along really is not a good call. And Baylor will punt. Willie Shupp. Last week, he averaged 47 and a half yards per punt. Back to receive it is Chris Hudson. Shupp gets his foot into this one. Ooh. And, oh! 
and Baker stepped over the end line instead of staying at the one. And the Bucks will get the ball at the 20 instead. <laughs> the goof was by Malcolm Hamilton of Baylor. They had CU nailed dead to rights at the one. We'll take a break with CU leading 7 0. Baylor okay, quarterback J.J. Joe on the sideline talking to the coaches up high in the booth here over the stadium. Baylor with limited success on offense. Right now it's CU on offense. Cordell Stewart looking to throw. The Buffs come off throwing today. Michael Westbrook for first down yardage. 10 yards on the play. Kendrick Bell the coverage. And the Buffs are up to their own 30-yard line. And just like last year, you're really taken by the velocity of the ball that Cordell Stewart throws. Fine catch here by Michael Westbrook. And up for the first down. But when you see him release the football, you're just amazed how quickly that ball gets there. Westbrook, the junior out of Detroit. Fifth in the nation in receptions last year. And they're going deep to CJ. He's got it. Inside the 20, touchdown, CU! Well, besides a great throw and an excellent catch, the one thing that makes this play is the fake of Cordell Stewart. We won't see it here. All you see is a defensive back looking in and getting beaten. The free safety right there bites, and Stewart lays it up for Charles Johnson. When you get a receiver that open, just put some air under the ball and let him run underneath it. And then there probably aren't a handful of guys in the country that catch C.J. from behind. Berger's extra point is good. And with 5.27 to go, first quarter, the Buffs jump to a 14 and nothing lead. Take a look at the play action fake by Cordell Stewart and watch what it does to the linebackers and the safeties. The fake to Lamont Warren, both linebackers bite and the safety on his way up as Charles Johnson runs past him. And Chris Lewis, the free safety, trying to stay up, but again, great speed on the outside for this Colorado football team. And Cordell Stewart knows this one is in the books. Cordell, you might notice, playing with a soft cast still on his left wrist. A wrist he injured early last year. It's just for precautionary measures. Charles Johnson, 57 catches last year. What a remarkable story he is. A tough upbringing. He's graduated in three years. He'll be a high NFL draft pick if he decides to go that route, and I'm sure he will. And today, a 70-yard touchdown reception from his friend Cordell Stewart. Talking with one NFL scout last week, I asked him about Charles Johnson, what he was most impressed with. And he said the top thing that jumps out at you from Charles Johnson is toughness. Really is a tough kid at wide receiver, mentally as well as physically. Berger to kick off once again. Randell Jackson, Khalif Muhammad waiting for it. But neither will have a shot. Deep into the end zone goes Berger, and Baylor once again will start with it from the 20. Well, again, you can see Johnson is clearly behind the secondary. That's about a six-yard cushion. Cordell Stewart with enough air under the football that Charles Johnson can run underneath it and then run away from Baylor. That's a quick one. Two plays, 80 yards, and 25 seconds. Well, the defense probably on the sideline saying, guys, take a little more time. We need a little more rest. Last, I don't think you and I could run 80 yards in 25 <laughs> seconds. And that's one play. J.J. Joe on the day has completed one pass and two attempts. They're going to have to throw the ball a little more to get back into this game. Up the middle, they try it. The ball is loose. A couple of buffs there. This is Lindsey. And he is out inside the Baylor 20. Greg Lindsay, the fumble recovery. And we just talked earlier about in a game on the road, when you play a team that's heavily favored, the quickest way to get out of the game is to turn the football over on your side of the 50. This is the second time for Baylor. You'll see some pretty good popping inside. 
Right there, the ball knocked free. Dwayne Davis with a shoulder on the football. Greg Lindsay with the recovery. And CU for the second time has the football inside Baylor's 50. You'll see Collier on the right side. Davis with the pop will come from the left side. Knock that ball free. Buffs with the ball at the Baylor 17. A pitch to James Hill. He's got a lot of room. A fumble into the end zone. See who falls on it. Touchdown. I believe it's Charles Johnson. the two quickest touchdowns Charles Johnson will ever score. Well, when you're living right, <laughs> I guess things go your way. The option to the weak side, and this thing looked like a touchdown right from the start, but James Hill will have the ball stripped. You see it bounce into the end zone, and C.J. Charles Johnson able to gather it in. Chris Lewis, the safety, knocked the ball free, but the Buffs score anyway. It's Berger, who's had a very busy first quarter. Makes it CU 21 and Baylor nothing with 5.08 still to go in just the first quarter. Well, it looked like James Hill was on his way to the Buffs' third touchdown. The ball knocked free, and you can see Charles Johnson in the end zone almost all by himself. Gathers it in, draws a crowd, and the Buffs with their second quick scoring drive. They've scored two touchdowns now in 35 seconds. That one a fumble recovery, and they lead the Bears of Baylor 21-0. Charles Johnson must be sitting on the sideline and drooling. Two very quick touchdowns. He has three on the year so far. He caught a touchdown pass last week. And all of last year, he only scored five. So, CJ very close to eclipsing last season's mark. Berger, a semi-short kickoff for him at least. Khalif Muhammad. He is stopped at the 19-yard line by Donnell Liamini, a receiver who switched over to defense for CU this year. I can tell you now, Jack Kroll, who's the offensive coordinator of Baylor, former head coach of Arkansas, telling his troops, hey, let's settle down and get into the offense and try to knock out a few first downs and get his club settled down before they get completely blown out of Baylor. Just saw a shot of Liam Eady. He's quite an athlete out of American Samoa. Played wide out last year. Switched to strong safety this year. We might see some of him if this keeps up. Taylor tries the left side. It was Brandel Jackson. He's stacked up at the 22 by a host of buffs. Well, keep in mind, Baylor last week was down by 20 points to Fresno State and came back to win that game. So don't go anywhere yet, folks. We have 435 to go in the first quarter. See you in 21 nothing week. But on the other hand, though, playing at home certainly helped them. Plus, it was extremely hot. And reports had Fresno tiring in the second half. And J.J. Joe got incredibly hot throwing the football. J.J. Joe, out there by John Knudsen. About the line of scrimmage. Well, when you play the veer, you have to try to get as much penetration as you can and take care of the fullback. You see the fullback tackled at the line, and there's the penetration. Knutson from the outside, Clavel from the nose, chasing down the line. They force Baylor into a situation that they don't much care for, third and medium. Darius Holland now in the game on the defensive line for the Buffs. Joe needs to throw on third and five. He has a man open, and it's complete at the 40. Wayne Davis makes the tackle, and a receiver hurt on the play. One of the things that impressed Bill McCartney about J.J. Joe was his accuracy throwing the deep ball. This not really a deep throw, a tremendous catch by Todd Crawford, the tight end. Davis with pretty good position, but Crawford able to stretch out and hang on. Now he's stretched out on the field as the training staff looks him over. 3.39 to go, first quarter. Connecting point of the would like to 
This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC TV and the National Broadcasting Company. Any reproduction of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC TV is prohibited. He owns the highest GPA of all the Look at the Baylor sidelines, some concerns for their fallen teammate right now. The connecting point located at 30th and Pearl. I believe that's Todd Crawford. Here at tight end. Place. See if we can see how Crawford got hurt. You see the throw on the outside. The tight end just goes to the flag or corner. Watch this catch. Arms extended on his fingertips. Looked like he fell on his right shoulder. Again, pretty good coverage by Dwayne Davis. Crawford up on his own two feet. Walk off the field without any help. Well, nice to see he's okay. The buffs in a show of sportsmanship. Pat him on the back as he walks by. J.J. Joe now with a first down situation at his own 40-yard line. And Baylor needs a quick strike. Down 21-0. Three running backs behind the quarterback. It goes to the first man through, Bradford Lewis, and he gets about three before Sheldon Favell makes the stop. Favell very active today. 270-pound sophomore out of New Orleans. Bradford Lewis had a pretty good game last week against Fresno State. Besides the 60 yards rushing, he scored two touchdowns. Call it second and a long six for Baylor at their own 44. This is Brandell Jackson across the 45. Matt Russell to stop. It's the first time we've called his name all day. Russell, a redshirt freshman out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. And this is the kind of drive that Baylor desperately needed. Even though they're not making huge plays right now, they're hanging on to the football with safe, Safe plays, getting three and four yards. They can get this first down now. Maybe Chuck Reedy can get his troops settled down a little bit. Well, three more yards would get them into CU territory. They're three yards from midfield, and it is third and three. And it looks like Bradford Lewis has it. Russell again the stop. It is a first down for Baylor. They move the chains. It's not really exciting, but the fullback here, a nice job of spinning off the initial hit and getting that first down. And that's the kind, again, that's the kind of running and the kind of plays you, you get from Baylor, and then they lull you to sleep and hit you with that deep pass. A lot of cheers for Bradford Lewis when he carries the ball. He's a Waco kid. Local favorite. First down at the 50. This is Brandall Jackson inside the 45. A gain of seven, Clavel the tackle. Over the right side for Baylor. Jackson with a nice cut here from the tailback position. Lead blocked by the fullback. Jackson able to spin away. And right now, Baylor's picking up significant yardage on the ground. You get in second and four, you're predominantly a running team. You're going to like your chances in two cracks is picking up another first down. 120 to go, first quarter. Baylor in CU territory. Another fumble. Looks like CU has it again. Yes. And it's Shannon Clavel with the fumble recovery. By the same play as last time, the lead from the eye. And you'll see the fullback gets stuffed in the hole. And I don't think Jackson ever had the football. Didn't look like J.J. Joe and Bradford, excuse me, Brandell Jackson had a good match. That ball was on the turf before the defense got it. See you with the ball, their third fumble recovery of the, of the afternoon. 
And the Buffs try the middle. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks a lot, Les. That was Rashad Salam's first carry of the year. Uh, it's going to be kind of fun all day to watch the, the battle between Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook. Westbrook caught a 10-yard pass early in the ball game, so then he passed Monty Huber as the career reception yardage leader. Then Charlie Johnson caught the 70-yard pass, so now Charlie Johnson's in front. They're going to have a battle all day. Back up to you guys. Uh, Mark, not just all day, all year. They'll probably go back and forth. Second and 10 for the Buffs. Cordell Stewart on the outfield and banged right off the helmet of Charles Johnson. <laughs> you see C.J. slapping his pads. I think at times, even receivers who work with Cordell Stewart every day in practice don't completely figure that ball to get there quite as quickly. Cordell Stewart saying, that's okay. That thing hit him right in the face mask. You don't see Charles Johnson allow that to happen all that often. It's third and ten from their own 45. The Buffs, Cordell Stewart, complete to Westbrook. First down and more inside Baylor territory. Finally dragged down at the 40 by the linebacker, Chris Dull. Boy, this is the nice thing about having a wide receiver the size of Michael Westbrook. When you run him on the slip screen, he comes down from the outside. Now you've got a guy that runs 4-4, but he's almost the same size as a tight end. Westbrook able to pick up the first down. Conversely, the quarterback who throws the screen doesn't quite get away with as, as much ground as the wide receiver. Cordell Stewart did get banged up on that play, but he's okay. Salam tries the left side. And he's inside the 40-yard line. First quarter winding down, five seconds to go. Clubs will let it run out. And at the end of one, CU well in command of this game, 21 to nothing. Earlier by Cordell Stewart, this is what happens to a quarterback when he throws the screen. He has to hold the ball to the last minute and then duck. Michael Westbrook is running up the field behind the big offensive lineman and making people miss, and everybody's cheering, and Cordell Stewart's under about 900 pounds of beef. Wondering if the pass was completed and if Michael Westbrook gained any yardage oh, after Lord. Second and six for the Buffs at the Baylor 36. Trying to add to that 21 to nothing lead as we start the second quarter. Stewart takes off inside the 15. Smartly runs out of bounds at the 13. Yeah. Boy, he just flies. Appropriately he? described. I think when Cordell Stewart first began to play quarterback at Colorado, he would have tried to turn this up and take on three defenders for extra yardage. As you play more and more, you realize that that's not the wise thing to do. Get what you can and then duck out of bounds. You stay healthier a lot longer. Smart play by Cordell Stewart. And he has had problems with his health because of tendencies like that. Not anymore. First down for the Buffs at the Baylor 13. Two wide receivers both lined up to the right of Cordell Stewart. Here comes the blitz and Stewart is audible. Runs the option. This is Salam. He might have gotten a yard out of that. Henrik Bell gave him a good smack. Let's take a look at some stats from the first quarter. You know, if you look at this at face value, outside of yards passing, it doesn't look like Baylor played too bad a first quarter. What you don't see there are turnovers. Baylor fumbled the ball away three times, and that's why the Buffs lead. 21 to nothing. Second and 10 for CU. Salam up the middle. Nice dance inside the 10, inside the 5, down to the 4. Boy, they really have a trio of talented running backs here between Salam, Hill, and Warren. But Rashawn Salam is a guy that doesn't look like he weighs 205 pounds, but he's got very good power. You think of another back from California, a speed guy that won't run between the tackles, but not only can he do this, hip and hop, but then he can do this, running over people. That's strength right there. He got four or five extra yards after the initial hit. Well, Lamont Warren is the speed guy, James Hill is the bruiser, and Salam can do a little of both. Well, McCartney has a lot of choices depending on the situation. It's third and one. On the Baylor four-yard line, Salam. Maybe a yard, maybe two. 
Chris Dull to tackle. Well, there's a hat I'll have to get you for Christmas, <laughs> I think you I already have one. <laughs> Salon picks up the first down, so it'll be first and goal for the Buffs at the two. See, it's down at, at this position of the field that last year Colorado had all sorts of problems knocking the ball in the end zone because they refused basically to go to a two-back system. Now you'll see once they get inside the 10-yard line, you'll see two backs a lot. One of the first things Elliot Uzelak installed when he came over here as offensive coordinator. Stewart rolls right. He is in. Another touchdown for the Buffs. the best of both worlds. Christian Fourier is wide open in the back of the end zone. James Hill running to the sideline is covered. Stewart realizes he's got enough speed to turn the corner and the Buffs with their fourth score of the first half. Berger's leg's going to get tired. The extra point is good. His fourth of the game. And that should tell you the Buffs with 12.57 to go in the second quarter made it 28 to nothing. CU leading 24th ranked Baylor. Already looking like a blowout, and we've got 12.57 to go in the second quarter. Mitch Berger has kicked off now five times. He has had four extra points that were good. He's kicked the ball nine times today, and we just started the second quarter. The receivers for Baylor on this kickoff, Khalif Muhammad and Brandel Jackson, they've been doing it all afternoon. Brandel Jackson does the smart thing and downs it six yard deep in his own end zone. That last scoring drive for CU went eight plays. 55 yards in just 317, culminating in a Cordell Stewart touchdown run. So Baylor with the ball at its own 20. Now one of the major rule changes in college football this year, Dave, they've moved the hash marks in six feet eight inches from last year's marks. Yeah, and offensive coordinators everywhere jumping up and down for joy while the defensive coordinators are saying, why did you have to do that? It really helps the offense. There's no short side of the field anymore, and you can't, as a defensive unit, you can't play people to the sideline, to the short side, and use an extra player to the wide side because now you've got two wide sides. It also puts the field goal kicker closer to midfield, so he's not kicking it at such a bad angle. Such a severe angle. More head-on towards the goalposts. But now, if you're Baylor, you almost have to change your personality a bit offensively. You have to find some way to get some points on the board. Although you've been able to run the ball fairly well. This is straight, running it fairly well for a first down up to the 34-yard line before Dennis Collier stops it got to find a way to score here in the last 12 minutes plus in the first half. Robert Strait, we talked about, the big fullback, 245 pounds. He just steps through the defense. You can see CU defensively still trying to tackle the football. Six turnovers against Texas. They've already had three here against Baylor. And you can start to believe that you're a pretty good defense when you cause turnovers like that. Baylor with the ball. It's on 33 with a first down. The pitch is Brandel Jackson. He's knocked out at the 46 by Chris Hudson. Well, if your offense, the option attack, and Baylor's been good at running inside. This time, J.J. Joe slips the fullback and continues down the line. Jackson has the corner turn before he even catches the football. Well, Dave Baylor is running the ball effectively, but when do you start putting it up? Down 28 to nothing. Well, I tell you, I think they'd like to use a lot of clock here and just knock one in if they can continue to run. They just need to score on this drive. Joe will go into the air now. Nowhere near the intended receiver, Brandel Jackson. I think he saw his man was covered, and he basically just threw it away. 
Well, and CU defensively realizes the last couple of times they've played Baylor, the Bears have hurt them with long passes, and so they've worked on that this week. And J.J. Jill has not had any open receivers so far this afternoon. You see two and four for only 34 yards. You're right about hurting him for long passes. He only completed six against the Buffs last year, but he racked up 262 yards in the air. They had three plays of 72 yards or more. This time incomplete to Robert Strait. And that'll bring up third and ten for him. J.J. Joe is a smart young man. He's trying to figure up something, conjure up something. All-conference academic team in the Southwest Conference. A finance major. But right now, the numbers are not adding up for him. Third and ten for Baylor at its own 46. We've got 11.30 to go, second quarter. CU leads it 28-0. Good rush. J.J. Joe can't shake off Ronnie Wolfrook. Yes, he does. And across midfield, down to the CU 43-yard line. What a play to shake off big Ronnie Wolfrook. Oh, this is just a great play. This is going to be a shovel pass, and the running back will get knocked down inside. And so when J.J. Joe tries to shovel, there's nobody to put it to. And he just finally pulls away from Ronnie Wolfrook. And then, with a great move here, gets enough yardage for the first down. The shovel pass with nowhere to go, and you can see Joe just yanks himself out of the grasp of Ronnie Wolfork, and then Jersey hanging is off to the races for the first down. Baylor at the CU 43. Up the middle goes Lewis inside the 40. Again, a four, That's Shannon Clavel. Well, Shannon Clavel really started coming on strong at the end of last year. Four tackles and had a sack in the Fiesta Bowl against Syracuse. Or, uh, yeah, Syracuse. A gain of three on that last play, so it's second and seven for the Bears. Joe, complete. A nice catch made by Dustin Denard. Chris Hudson on the coverage. Short of the first down. Denard, the outside receiver, you'll see makes a nice catch here. A good adjustment on the ball thrown behind him. Again, Baylor pretty basic in their pass attack. Pitches, short routes, and play action deep. You being a former wide receiver in college and in the NFL, what's the toughest adjustment to make, the hardest ball to adjust to? I think, it, I think it, it differs from receiver to receiver. For big guys, there's always a ball thrown low, down below the knees, because it's a long way to reach. Some guys, a ball thrown behind it. Busted play, the snap. Got to J.J. Joe, but it was bobbled first, and Darius Holland is in there to make the tackle, and a loss for Baylor. And I think Baylor's going to have to think about going for it here in fourth down. Joe never got the football. Looks like he had his face mask grabbed there, hops over one of his own linemen, and finally is pulled down from behind. Down 28 nothing. I don't think even though it's fourth and six on the 39 was much of a choice. Well, Baylor's suffering from a real bad case of the dropsies today. They've already lost three fumbles. They almost let another one loose there. Back at the 38-yard line of CU. And Baylor will go for it. It's fourth and six. And a flag down. Didn't see any movement. May have been time clock, too much time. Although when the clock, when the play was blown dead, there was still Dead one ball second foul. Left. Ball start on the offense. And there's still one second left on the 25 second clock, so somebody must have moved out of a three point stance. And now Baylor decides on fourth and 11, they need to punt. Willie Shuck comes in. Baylor, number 98, back to receive it is Chris Hudson. Willie Shuck the punter. He's back at his 45, going for the corner. 
And once again, Baylor unable to keep the ball in play. It goes into the end zone, and CU will take the ball at its own 20. With a 28 to nothing lead, we have 8.57 to go in the half. Seven to go, second quarter. Sue leading Baylor 28 to nothing, and the Buffs have the ball at their own 20 yard line. Into the ball game now for the Buffs on the offensive line. Matt Lepsis at left tackle. Cordell Stewart. The pass is caught and complete to the tight end, Sean Embry. Young man from Englewood, Cherry Creek High School. For well, the misdirection play again, we've seen Cornell Stewart run this a lot. And then both tight ends, this tight end to the side of the roll releases outside. In this case, the tight end on the left side, Sean Embry just runs a crossing route wide open. First down, Salam tries the left side. Up to the 33, a gain of two, Charles Horton. Well, along with our viewers all over Colorado who can pick up Channel 4 KCNC, we'd like to welcome our friends down in Southern Colorado watching the game on KOAA. Nice to have you us. And if you're a CU fan, I'm sure you think it's very nice also. 28 to nothing, the Buffs. Cordell Stewart on the day, not too bad. Six for seven, 124 yards, and a touchdown pass to Charles Johnson. He's also run one in. Stewart, to CJ right there. First down. C.J. gets the extra yard with the stretch. He's in Baylor territory. Philip Kent stops him. And because of the speed of these two receivers, as a defensive back, you have to give them a lot of cushion. Cordell Stewart, a five-step drop. That ball just out guns the defensive back. Really not, not too bad a coverage by Tyrone Smith, but Charles Johnson able to skirt for additional yardage. That's, that's tough to play. It's a defensive back. You've got a quarterback with that kind of arm. Salam. And he pulls his way down to the Baylor 40. A yard short of the first down. Daryl Gardner made him come up short. And Rashawn Salam will get a good block outside by Charles Johnson as he bounces around the end. Make that Michael Westbrook who threw the block. You can see the CU running game even early this year has a much different look than what we saw in all of last year. Changed the blocking schemes and really concentrated more on getting that running game geared up. Second and one for CU. Cordell's going to try and make it himself. He does and goes out of bounds inside the 35. Back to uh, Rashawn Salam for a second, the sophomore out of San Diego. This is his first game action this year. He was suspended the first game because he violated team rules. And he's showing pretty well here today. There's a buff down on the field. Good look at Mr. Salam. He was in uniform for the Buffs last year, bothered by an ankle much of the year, however. Ended up running for 158 yards. That's Baylor. A Baylor coach on the sideline. Those little arrows, little squigglies, are missed tackles and fumbles. Is that to say he was not an art major in college? Now, when you fumble that many times, you start to squiggle a little bit more. So then he fumbled here and he jumped outside. And then, then we missed the block and he fumbled here. And before you know it, you got a lot of little squigglies out there. Now, that to me looks like a, something out of uh, War of the Worlds <laughs> the alien spacecraft. Chad Hammond, hurt for Colorado. Got hurt in a cut by number 76 right there. Cuts down Chris Dole, the linebacker, and injures himself. Now the sophomore out of your alma mater, Wheat Ridge, is taken off the field. Chad Hammond, starting offensive lineman. Buffs have a first and ten on the Baylor 34. We've got less than seven minutes to go, second quarter. Salam tries it off left tackle inside the 35. Gain of a couple, Philip Kent the tackle. The only game not 
that sold out this year is the Kansas game. I believe there's still a few tickets left, and if you're interested, give the CU Athletic Department a call this week. Salam gets free inside the 20 before a couple of gold and white jerseys stack him up. It's a gain of 13 yards for Rashad. Boy, when you're ahead 28 to nothing, you can really start to concentrate on any phase of the game you'd like. The running game in particular, you saw an excellent block as Salam broke over right tackle Craig Anderson. Doing a good job there. Somebody lost their shoe. Thought it was the ball for a second. I thought a little, saw a little dark colored object coming out of that pile there. On the day, Salam with 40 yards rushing. And a chance for some more right here. But he's stopped for no gain by Steve Strahan. So I'm getting a lot of time this afternoon. Lamont Warren started a tailback. Of course, when you run by a defense for a long touchdown reception, they then give you a lot of respect. That's a 10-yard cushion. You wonder why some of those outcuts are wide open. Second and 10 for CU at the Baylor 19. That looked like a busted play. Stewart will try to make something out of it, and he gets hit very hard by Kendrick Bell. He gets a yard out of it, but Dave, I don't know if it was worth it. <laughs> well, again, a quarterback's nightmare is when you turn around to hand it off, and there is nobody. All right, so he's trying to make something happen, and before Cordell Stewart could get down, he took a pretty good pop by a guy, Kendrick Bell, who was an offensive player last year. Last year, converted running back in the spring. And work from the CU sideline. Starting offensive lineman Chad Hammond has a lower back bruise. We're not sure if he'll be returning to the game or not. Third and nine for the Buffs at the Baylor 18. Little dump off to Salam. He is stopped for a loss of one. Philip Kent had him wrapped around the ankles. That's a good job in the open field by Kent who's playing linebacker this year. Last year he played safety, but when you've got a running back, the caliber of Rashawn Salam out in the open field, and you can make a tackle like this, you've done a great job. Wrap him up and hold on. Mitch Berger will attempt a 36-yard field goal. This is his first field goal attempt of the year. He was 6 for 12 last year. And that kick is no good. Wide left. So the score remains CU 28, Baylor zip, and we have 344 to go in the first half. CU with a comfortable 28 to nothing lead over Baylor. Let's go down to the field and our Mark McIntosh now, Mark. Thanks a lot, Les. Actually, I'll throw it back up to you and just come back to me after this play. All right, we'll do that. Baylor with the ball at its own 20. A couple of yards on the run. All right, Mac, it's yours. Goal attempt there. Talking to him before the ball game, Mitch has lost about 10 pounds. He actually wanted to lose the weight, but now he's worried that he doesn't have the leg strength that he used to have. He doesn't feel he's hitting his punts as well. He doesn't feel he's hitting his uh, field goals as well. And when a kicker is not right mentally, you can't expect him to kick very well. He just didn't hit that uh, field goal there very well at all. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Baylor, second and seven. J.J. Joe loses the ball and fumbles as he's trying to throw. The call is Baylor recovers. Well, you don't see that one often. Well, this is like Casper the Ghost snuck up behind J.J. Joe and just took the football out of his hand. Joe trying to throw the ball in the flat. Whoop! Ball slipped out of his hand as he started to bring his arm up. What was the sound that made? That was you. Whoop! There you go. All right. I'll tell you what. Mark McIntosh making the point about the punter and field goal kicker not feeling good about his weight. I put him back in the, on the uh, training table. Stat him up a little bit. If Mitch feels like he's shy of weight, let him eat. Third and 19, Baylor on the draw, gets it back to the 15, a gain of four. John Knutson to tackle. 
Doesn't matter how much your punter weighs. And that'll bring up fourth down for Baylor. Watch this football as he starts to cock his armor, just and it's like it elevated in midair. And then J.J. Joe somehow able to gather this ball back in with his right arm. That CU 12th man. We have a timeout on the field. 2.17 to go in the second quarter. See you up 28 to nothing. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night at 10.35 for the Bill McCartney Show. It's the only place where you can hear it straight from the coach's mouth. Bill and Mark McIntosh will look back on today's game and look ahead to the big matchup next week at Stanford against the Cardinal and Bill Walsh. We'll also profile another CU student athlete. That's the Bill McCartney Show Sunday nights at 10.35 right here on News 4, the home of the CU Buffaloes. Fourth down for Baylor, Willie Shupp in the punt, and he is backed up against his own goal line. Chris Hudson to receive the punt. Straight down the middle of the field. Hudson from his own 36 puts a nice move on. Gets to the sideline in Baylor territory and he steps out of bounds inadvertently. Forget the fumble. The ball was whistled dead. Back at the Baylor 47. With nobody near him, Chris just stepped out of bounds. Well, he stepped out of bounds because he, when he turned the corner, he's running so fast and running out of territory, there's just nowhere to go. How about that move? Hudson now gets good blocks there and just continues to move to the outside. Looked like crazy legs there. This guy has remarkable skill and not only a great defensive back, but he is, as you see, dangerous as a kick returner. So CU has the ball in Baylor territory at the 47. Cordell Stewart still in the ball game at quarterback. It's complete to Westbrook. A fumble. Baylor with the ball. Michael Westbrook fumbles, and Philip Kent, the linebacker, recovers. And this really was very good coverage from Baylor. I'm not sure how Westbrook got open to catch this ball initially, but he is surrounded by white jerseys. And then as he tries to make a move, you can see there, number 11. Kendrick Bell knocks the ball free. Three defenders around Michael Westbrook who ran a hitch route at about 12 yards, and Baylor finally recovers a fumble. Credit that fumble recovery to Chris Lewis and not Philip Kent. Chris Lewis, the defensive back. J.J. Joe, good pressure on it. That's complete. No, incomplete. Baylor's lucky it wasn't complete. The CU would have had another fumble recovery. And this is what we talk about Baylor coming out of their true personality. Now Baylor trying to throw the football and not enough time in the half to really play action and certainly not enough time to run the football, so they have to drop back and throw it, and they're just not very good at it. Brings up second and ten for the Bears. For their own 39, less than two minutes to go, first quarter. <laughs> Flags down. Movement on the line again. And Baylor's heading north, which means it'll be against them. Shannon Clavell playing a whale of a game on defense. We've been calling his name a lot today on tackles. Five-yard penalty against Baylor brings up second and 15. Penalties on the other side of the line. You can't see the tight end. Todd Crawford, number 81, was the guy who jumped. Joe to throw. Over the middle, wide open was Brandel Jackson, but Joe threw it at his shoe tops, incomplete. J.J. Joe not looking very sharp. Well, you're asking him to do a lot of things that he's just not capable of doing. Joe is best when he's running the option and, and then pulling the option back out and throwing the deep ball, but when you ask him to drop back and 
spread the football around. That's not what he does best. Three of eight for 37 yards for Mr. Joe. In the game right now for the Buffs on defense is Michael Westbrook playing a safety position. They like his size back there, 6'4". And once again, Joe throws short to Brandel Jackson. Well, we were told Michael Westbrook might play some safety this year. We saw him in the game there. The play just didn't come his way. When you played for the Cleveland Browns, they had you do that a couple of times with your six foot five height, right? Yeah. Back there for the Hail Mary. And actually, a few plays before. Ever come close to an interception? I got one. Kept the ball. Who threw it? Steve Bartkowski. Of course, he threw a lot of them. A big name from the past. Wow. Boy, Shop really kills this one. Chris Hudson tries to pick it up at his own four. Has a little room, finds the sideline. And turns it into a 21-yard run back up to the CU 25-yard line. Michael Benjamin ran him out. We've got a minute 27 to go, first half. See you with a 28 to nothing lead. You may say, why does he try to field this inside the 10? It's actually a smart play. He was going to let it bounce, saw that it was going to bounce and die inside the 10, and then picked it up, and you can see why Chris Hudson, by the time he is done, will be one of the better punt returners, not only here in Colorado, but in the country. First down for the Buffs at their own 25. Continuing to throw with a 28-yard lead, 28-point lead, I should say. Michael Westbrook complete. An eight-yard gain up to the 33. Andrew Swayze to tackle. Well, stick around for halftime. We have a special guest up here in the week. Stone Phillips from NBC will be here. The co-host of Dateline along with Jane Pauley. And we'll talk to Stone, who has a college football career in his background. Cordell Stewart. Runs for the first down across the 35 up to the 38. I'm going to ask Stone how he, how he got that unusual uh, name, Phillips. That's what he says about that. Forty-five seconds to go, second quarter. This pass complete to T.J. Cunningham, his first reception on the afternoon, the sophomore out of Overland High School in Aurora. Colorado right now in the two-minute offense, trying to hurry up and get a field goal opportunity. They were 6 of 12 in scoring opportunities in the two-minute offense last year. Of course, they've had some great come-from-behind wins in that two-minute offense as well. Think of Stillwater a couple of years ago. And Oklahoma last year, they got themselves in a position to tie the game. Very effective in that two-minute drill. According to Dave Platty in the SID's office, the last 67 times the Buffs have been in that situation, they've scored 47. Very nice percentage. A field goal or a touchdown. The Buffs with second and 10 at their own 49. Stewart dumps off to Warren. He's across midfield. Gain of a couple. Tony Tubbs the tackle. Another timeout taken by CU. 19 seconds to go. And you're about 17 to 20 yards away from a realistic opportunity at a field goal. You still have one timeout. You'd like to save that, obviously, to get your field goal team on. But something to the outside and that much depth, and you've got a shot to at least attempt a three. This year, it's a whole new beat on Broncos beat, and be sure to tune in at 6.30 tonight for a fun-filled half hour. Gary Miller will be joined by Broncos All-Pro Safety Steve Atwater. We'll preview tomorrow's game against the San Diego Chargers. That's Broncos beat, Saturdays at 6.30 on News 4, home of the Broncos. And I noticed down in the stands, San Diego Chargers general manager Bobby Bethel is here. Doing a little scouting. Might be taking a real close look at this young man, Cordell Stewart. He'll be eligible for that draft in a couple of years. Cordell, just a junior, already holds 
a number of CU passing records, career passing records. Third and seven for the Buffs. In Baylor territory at the 48. On the day for Cordell, he's only throwing two incomplete passes. This time he's complete to Charles Johnson. Out of bounds at the 39. Another first down, 14 seconds to go in the half. Flag down on the field on that play. I'm wondering if Colorado might have had an illegal receiver downfield on this play. But again, the outcut with a guy the strength of the arm like a Cordell Stewart is very tough to defend. There were two, two tight ends downfield, but I'm not sure one of them might not have been covered to the outside receiver. Let's see what Terry Turlington says. Pick up the flag. <laughs> That's all we get. Well, there's a new penalty. Yeah. <laughs> I think they may have felt like one of the receivers again for the tight ends had a wide receiver on the line, which would have made that tight end ineligible. But no call. So it is a first down for the Buffs at the Baylor 39. Again, Charles Johnson split wide right with a 10-yard cushion. If I'm Cordell Stewart, that's where I'm going with some sort of out cut to get him out of bounds in the ball. I try that same screen in the middle to Michael Westbrook, but this time it's behind him and incomplete. Scotty Lewis with some good pressure on Cordell. That'll bring up second and ten. Ten seconds to go, first half. The Baylor Bears with a bird's eye view trying to stop the Buffs. 28 to nothing is enough of a halftime deficit for them. Right there. To CJ, he almost got a handle on it. But coming up to give him a nice smack was George McCullough. And CJ couldn't hold on. See, that's where I thought they would throw last time, and this one's going to be an easy pitch and catch, but the ball was behind Charles Johnson. When you throw that kind of pass, that's the only place you can get in trouble. If you throw the ball up the field where the defensive back has a shot at the ball or your receiver. Brings up third and ten in the ball game now for CU. The fastest kid on this team, James Kidd. He'll line up at a wideout. In fact, the Buffs have four men lined up at receiver right now. With five seconds to go, watch for the Hail Mary. And there it is. Cordell puts it up. Oh, my goodness, a touchdown. It looks like Charles Johnson once again. <laughs> if it stands, and it looks like it will, it's CJ's third touchdown of the afternoon. Boy. As if Baylor wasn't demoralized enough. The Hail Mary, you just want to throw it up. Your big receiver, your middle receiver, Michael Westbrook, is the designated jumper. He'll go up and try to get these hands in the ball and keep it alive. And you can see there the ball tipped to Charles Johnson with a great adjustment on the deflection. His third touchdown of the afternoon. And Burgers fifth extra point. And the Buffs will go into the locker room with a 35 to nothing lead over 24th ranked Baylor. Charles Johnson with three touchdowns on the afternoon. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Well, we lost him. Thanks, guys. Uh, Mac wanted to get in the locker room, 35-0 uh, lead, but uh, he's in a hurry to get in there, so we lost him right there, but a great catch from Charles Johnson. The Buffs walking off all smiles right now. Leading, hi, Glenn, leading 35 to nothing. Maybe we'll try to get Coach Mack as he comes back out on the field for the second half. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Well, Coach Mack must have been so excited, he ran right to the locker room. We didn't get a chance to talk to him, but we will come the end of the game. We promise you that. Here's that play. The Hail Mary to end the first half. Cordell Stewart's reaction as Charles Johnson hauls it in, and the Buffs go into the locker room with a 35 to nothing lead. Buffs lead Baylor 35 to nothing. And we're going to take a look 
And some of those scores from CU, some of them pretty incredible, some very unconventional ways that the Buffs got into the end zone. Crashing over the right side of the offensive line. Good job up front of CU early. Got the running game going against the Bears. Second one, not so close as Charles Johnson the beneficiary of a fine play action fake by Cornell Stewart. Johnson gathers this one in and also a lot of territory as he runs to a 70 yard touchdown pass. And that was just about time that things started to go haywire for Baylor. And this one really exemplifies how the first half has gone for the Bears. They force a fumble as James Hill is about to score. But look who gets it, Charles Johnson. At that time, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And hat trick time for CJ, the last play of the first half. Michael Westbrook in the middle of your screen, number 81, will jump up. Somehow the ball gets batted up in the air. And number nine, Charles Johnson, makes a nice adjustment, lays out, gathers it in at Colorado with a 35 to nothing halftime lead on that play. First half stats for you. The Buffs with twice as many first downs. Yards rushing. Well, the Buffs haven't had to run the ball all that much. 30 yards more than Baylor. The passing stats, there's a great difference there. Almost 200 yards. And same with total yards. But the big stat right there, turnovers. Baylor has lost three fumbles that led to CU touchdowns. Now let's go down to the field right before the second half kickoff to our Mark McIntosh. Thanks a lot, Les. Got some tidbits from Bill McCartney's halftime speech, so to speak, to his ball club. Reminded them that the Baylor Bears last week were down 20 to nothing to Fresno State and came back and won that ball game. Also reminded them that last year down in Waco, Texas, they had a big lead on the Baylor Bears at halftime, and Baylor came back. So Baylor, definitely the type of ball club that can get some points on the board in a hurry. He told them not to let down. He also wants to see the offense sustain the football more than it did in the first half. The Buffs very opportunistic scored on a lot of quick touchdowns after turnovers. He wants to see the offense control the ball more in the second half. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. And for the first time all afternoon, the Baylor Bears are kicking off. Ty Atterbury doing the honors. And the deep man for CU right now, Michael Westbrook, back at the goal line. And he'll let it go through the end zone. Atterbury with a strong leg. So the Buffs will start with the ball at their own 20. Well, in case you didn't watch the news last night or catch a newspaper this morning, CU Athletic Director Bill Merolt announced last night he has withdrawn as a candidate for the position of President and CEO of the United States Ski Team, so he will stay at CU as the Athletic Director for his 10th year. Your old Merolt has been CU's AD since 1984. Well, that's good to know, Dave. You and I both fans and friends of Bill Merle. New quarterback in for the Buffs, Vance Joseph. The pitch to Lamont Warren, who high-steps it, and maybe got a couple of extra yards with that. Chris Dullin right away. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about J.J. Joe, the Baylor quarterback, and how it seems he's been around Baylor forever. Vance Joseph, it seems, has been around here a long time as well. Of course, the guy that's been asked to change with the offense, basically an option kind of quarterback, and yet Vance Joseph, the one game that stands out most in my mind in Stillwater, Oklahoma, when he led the Buffs back on a last-minute drive and enabled CU to pull the victory out over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. What a comeback. Some unbelievable runs by Vance that game to escape the defense and complete some passes. This pass tipped. And incomplete. So that'll bring up third and seven for the Buffs. Michael Westbrook, the junior out of Detroit. Some publications call him the number one wide receiver in the nation. And only a junior. It's a rare combination when you find that kind of size and speed. 6'4", 210, 4'4", in the 40. What excellent hands. Last year against Baylor, he had a career game. 11 catches, which is a CU single game record. 186 yards. A little mix up on the CU side of the ball, so the Buffs call a timeout, and Vance Joseph will go to the sidelines to discuss things. So the Buffs.
Hawks burn a timeout with just nine seconds gone in the second half. Be sure to join us for the Wade Phillips Show this Monday night. I'll be joined by the coach of the Broncos and a special player guest. We'll review the San Diego Chargers game, and we'll also take a journey into Wade's world. You never know what will happen each week on the Wade Phillips Show. Last week, we had a singing telegram congratulating Wade on his first career win as a head coach. That's why everybody's watching Wade. You can, too, Mondays at 6.30 on News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. A journey into where? Wade's world. <laughs> Party on. <laughs> By Garth and who? Uh, Garth and again? Brooks, isn't it? No. <laughs> Wayne and Garth. Wayne and Garth. Party on. Third and seven. Vance Joseph at the helm. Cordell Stewart getting the second half off after a very successful first half. Complete to Lamont Warren. And he got the first down before being pushed back. Tackle made by George McCullough. Well, I've talked about Cordell Stewart's arm. I'll tell you what, Vance Joseph, not nearly as big, but this is an excellent throw. You send Lamont Warren out in motion. You force the defense to adjust, and then Warren does a good job of getting just enough yardage, and once he catches it, he's got the first down. This time the handoff to Warren, and he's thrown for a three-yard three loss by Scotty Lewis. Well, Lamont was bothered by a shoulder injury much of 92, and that could be one reason he wasn't as effective as a runner. But now he's healthy and looking very, very good. 110 yards on the ground last week in the opener against Texas. Second and 13. Warren again. Across the 30. Back to the line of scrimmage, the original line. Tony Tubbs, the tackle. And you may be asking, why does Bill McCartney have a lot of first-team players still in the game? You want to give them a couple of series here in the third quarter. Because even though the game appears to be comfortably out of the reach of Baylor, down 35 nothing, you still don't want to play these guys just ahead. You want them to get their timing down. You want this new, young offensive line to have a chance to block. And plus, you've got a second-team quarterback in. You want to protect him and give him a chance to play well also. All that while keeping in mind the Buffs have Stanford next week and Miami the week after. Joseph on the run. Run out of bounds. Three yards short of the first down. Adrian Robinson put his head down and knocked him out. And that'll bring up fourth down. Adrian, have to punt. Adrian Robinson, number seven right there, backup quarterback last year. Missed spring practice with a knee injury. But seldom you see quarterbacks when they change positions come up and make tackles like that. A great athlete in high school. He was all state in Texas at defensive back and quarterback. And the punt for CU is Berger. And back to receive it for Baylor is Pierce Pagras. Berger, second in the nation in punting last year with a short one, but he gets the bounce. And the Buffs will down it at the 24-yard line. So that's where Baylor will start with it. Down 35 to nothing. Cordell Stewart on the sideline, his helmet off, taking a little swig. Did a very nice first half. 14 for 18, 225 yards, two touchdown passes. He also ran one. Most impressive stat there, zero in the right-hand column. No interceptions. Coming into today's game, two interceptions in his last 132 passes in regular season action. John Henry across the 30. Gain of six. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh. Mark. Yeah, you look the last two years, Cordell Stewart against the Baylor Bears. Last year, he was 16 of 17 in the first half. This year, 14 of 18. What is that? That's uh, 30 of 35 in two ball games. So I imagine Cordell Stewart wishes the CU Buffs would play the Baylor Bears uh, each week. He could uh, run away with the Heisman Trophy with those kind of numbers. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mac. Mark brings up a good point. Buffs this year with a few Heisman Trophy candidates. Cordell Stewart, Charles Johnson, Michael Westbrook. Very tough for a wide receiver to win that trophy. So if you had to bet on one of the three, it would be Cordell Stewart. 
Although after watching CJ today, you'd have to consider him a leading candidate. Up the middle to the 49-yard line goes Bradford Lewis. A gain of 19. This is just a basic lead. As the tailback gets into the secondary, and Baylor's been able to run the football fairly well this afternoon. You see Brian Dagg gets knocked off his feet, and the back is by him. Bill McCartney looking for a solid effort defensively. Even ahead 35-0, you want your guys to tackle and play good defense. J.J. Joe keeps it, crosses midfield. Ronnie Wolfork there to knock him down. A gain of four. Ronnie Wolfork is a very tough linebacker to run the option on because he's got the size. When you see him, you want to pitch the ball, and yet he's got the quickness that once you pitch it, he can run things down. Second and six. Baylor at the CU 48. Pass complete to straight. Has some blocking in front of him. Fitz Hudson brings him down inside the 40. Dennis Collier also in on the tackle. Baylor's tried to screen the ball a couple of times. J.J. Joe has not put the ball where it had to be. This is a fullback screen off the lead, and Robert Strait makes a pretty good catch for a guy who doesn't catch the ball much. And then when you're that big, you know you're going to be tough to bring down with a full head of steam. First down for Baylor at the CU 37. The pitch to John Henry. He goes nowhere. You know, one of the reasons J.J. Joe might not be as effective passing the ball this year, he's missing a couple of pretty good receivers. David Mims and Melvin Bonner. They played at Baylor last year. Bonner, now with Denver Bronco, made the team as a sixth-round draft pick. Well, he burned CU a few times. Second and ten for Baylor. 11.05 to go, third quarter. The pitch to the short side of the field, John Henry, run out, no game. We talked about the hash marks being moved in. Again, an advantage for the offense. You can run the option more to what used to be the short side of the field. That time, good job by Collier. As he fights off the block and gets in the action. Dennis Collier, one time, was regarded as one of the best running backs that this program had back in his freshman season. Bounced around a little bit, now finds himself a starting quarterback on defense. And he is fast. And he's springing around a 4.3840. One of the fastest kids on this team. J.J. Joe this time racked up for a four-yard loss. And in on the tackle, Ronnie Wolfork and Ted Johnson. So credit CU with another sack. And that'll force Baylor to punt the ball once more. See you leading 35 to nothing. Less than 10 minutes to go, third quarter. The Buffs came into this game ranked 10th in the nation. Baylor came in ranked 24th. Willie Shup to punt. Charles Johnson to receive it. Might not have a chance. That ball kicked out of bounds. A very short kick. And it will be marked at the CU 18-yard line. We're going to take a break. There's your score. We'll be right back. Sold out Folsom Field. 52,000 strong here. They've got to be happy right now. CU leading it 35 to nothing. With the ball. Road 18. Vance Joseph is the quarterback, and he hands off to Lamont Ward. Don't get scared if you just tuned in. Vance Joseph is in just to spell Cordell Stewart, who had a wildly successful first half. Now he's getting a rest. Rest him for that Stanford game next week in Palo Alto. A nationally televised game that will start at 8.45 Rocky Mountain time. Second and three. Nice fake by Vance. And he's thrown for a loss. Daryl Gardner gets the sack. And on that misdirection play, he's got the tight end, Desmond Dennis, all by himself. 
just a case where Vance Joseph hasn't had a lot of playing time and probably not used to looking up and seeing somebody that open that quick. Desmond Dennis, a freshman tight end in the game now, one of Vance Joseph's targets. Also in the game, wide receiver James Kidd, a real speed burner. This is to Ward. A nice move, gets him up to the 28. He's very close to the first down. Tony Tubbs might have stopped him short. LeVon Warren ran track in the spring, did not participate in spring football, and yet he said he feels stronger and a little bit bigger this year than last year. This is a great change of direction. That burst right there. He's got it close to the first down. They're going to measure to see if that young man did get the first down, and he did. Eight twenty-eight to go, third quarter. Keep it right here. We'll give you some of the other college football scores from around the nation. If you heard a cheer from the crowd a few minutes ago, that's because we found out Nebraska is losing to Texas Tech 21 to 20 in the third quarter. We'll get you a bunch of others, including the CSU Air Force score. Up the middle, the Buffs go. A couple of yards on that play by Lamont Warren. Lamont Warren on the ball carrier. Don't forget, we have the Broncos at San Diego Chargers for you tomorrow, right here on Channel 4. Kickoff at 2 o'clock. There's that third quarter score from Nebraska. And up in Fort Collins, CSU leading Air Force 8 to 5 in the third. That's an odd score. Vance Joseph sees the first down marker, but falls a couple of yards short before he's run out of bounds. Vance Joseph, if he were at another school, especially an option school, I think is plenty good enough to be a starter at this level. Well, he had a real tough time last year, mentally and physically. He lost the backup quarterback job to Coy Detmer. He was red-shirted. He was rehabilitating a rotator cuff injury. And now he's back as the backup quarterback to Cordell. Lamont Warren pulls his way up to the CU 49-yard line and another first down. Chris Lewis to stop. Boy, coaches love to see this. Again, you're in firm control of the game, and you give that young offensive line a lot of things to work on. Let them come off the ball, knock folks down. You can see Derek West doing a good job up front, and then the power, again, of Lamont Warren. Well, Lamont Warren lists one of his hobbies as bowling, and he bowled over a couple, a couple of Baylor Bears right there. First down at their own 49. And it looked like the black shirts jumped off sides there. No question in the official's mind. Good ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Repeat first down. Never is. They're right even when they're wrong. <laughs> hey, is that what you're saying? That's right. <laughs> Spoken like a true coach. It doesn't matter. First and 15, see you with the ball at its own 44. James Hill back in the ball game. He carries, and he gets it back to midfield. A gain of six. Chris Lewis runs him out. Talk about bouncing around. Many folks, as we talked about last year, felt James Hill, when see you into this passing offense, would be the forgotten man. And for a little while, it looked like he might be just that. But he was the starting tailback as the season opened this year, and he's going to get a lot of playing time, as will the other two tailbacks. Second and nine. Joseph, a nice tight spiral, complete to Christian Fourier, the tight end. I believe that's his first catch on the afternoon after hauling in nine of them last week against Texas. And that's the same pass we talked about in this drive that Vance Joseph missed a wide open tight end and Desmond Dennis. The misdirection play, the tight end on the left side just blocks down and releases right to the sideline. Fourier with very good hands. We talk a lot about Westbrook and Charles Johnson, rightfully so. This may be the best tight end in college football. If not, he's very close. Up the middle, Lamont Ward. 
A gain of five. Welcome Hamilton to stop. Just about now, that offensive line says, hey, let's throw one in the end zone. Let's score quick. This thing's starting to take one of these nine-minute, 19-play drives, and when you get past about the seventh play, that offensive line starts to suck in the air. And it is primarily the starting offensive line in there, except for the right guard spot where Craig Anderson is in for the injured Chad Hamm. Vance Joseph escapes the first down and more. And out of bounds at the Baylor 25. Looks like Baylor might be sucking a little wind right now in this altitude. Yeah, there's not a lot of oxygen down there for either side. Vance Joseph looked like he was going to throw this ball deep and wanted to. Decided to pull it back down and then the athletic ability and just the instinct. The kid who's played that position a number of years. He's not only reliable, he is exciting to watch. Steps up in the pocket, goes deep. It's complete for a touchdown, James Kidd. The first touchdown in this young man's college career, James Kidd. I don't know who's happier, James Kidd or the offensive lineman. Man, they threw their arms up in the air and head to the sideline. Here's the pass they wanted into the end zone. James Kidd just on a seam post. You can see he is wide open. He is a 4-3 guy in the 40, the fastest CU buff this year. And his first touchdown of his career. And we're going to take a break as Mitch Berger puts through the extra point. 42 to nothing. See you in a runaway. After that touchdown pass from Vance Joseph to James Kidd, leading this ball game 42 to nothing. And for the upteenth time today, Mitch Berger will kick off for the Buffs. He's had as much action as anybody today. Between field goal attempts, extra points, and kickoffs. Randall Jackson and Khalif Muhammad back to receive. Well, the CU fans still into this game. You don't see many empty seats here at Folsom Field. They're having a ball. Burger's kick is picked up by Jackson, and he steps out of bounds at the 16th. If we would have waited, it would have gone out of bounds. James Kidd, his first touchdown catch, catch, nice adjustment. Ball thrown over the shoulder. Vance Joseph, the quarterback with a good throw, and he kind of likes this too. Yeah. Kick me in the game. And the scoring drive went 10 plays, 81 yards, and shoot up 337 on the clock. James Kidd, an aerospace engineering student at CU, he wants to be an astronaut. And I'll tell you, that last play was out of this world. Baylor's still running the ball, down 42 to nothing. That was John Henry, stopped by Daryl Price. Price now in the ball game, replacing Ronnie Wolfork in a linebacker spot. I'll tell you, the toughest thing to do in college football is when you're playing on the road and you're playing a superior team and you're just getting your brains beat out. You look up and you get 5.30 left in this quarter plus another quarter. You've got to go out and execute and play. Come off the ball and block and run hard. You just don't feel like it. Well, John Henry just ran that one hard on the right side. In about four yards, Shannon Clavell and Matt Russell to stop. Matt Russell playing a very good game today. He's forced to fumble. He's been in on quite a few tackles. A first-team All-American, a freshman redshirt out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. Third and one for Baylor. They're at their own 36. Excuse me, 26. And John Henry does get the first down before Price makes the stop again. Every time I see his name and say his name, I want to break into that old Smothers Brothers song. When John Henry was a little baby. 
baby. I, I never watched the Smothers Brothers. Not from that fun. song, though. I do from this song. Top-ranked Florida State, a big winner over Clemson. Look at this one. Notre Dame shocking Michigan in Michigan. Second-ranked Alabama leading Vanderbilt, beating Vanderbilt. Oklahoma has a tough one with Texas a and right now. That pass complete to Dustin Denard, the expert. Just a good throw, just on a curl wrap. See you now with some second and third team defenders in the game. Four twenty-five to go, third quarter. See you leading at forty-two to nothing. Baylor with a first down at its own forty-three. JJ Joe still in the game at quarterback. That pass complete. Todd Crawford, the tight end, a penalty flag goes down. Baylor gets it across midfield. Donnell Liamidi now in the ball game, getting some experience at the safety position. I think this may be a, a face mask penalty, although I thought Price, the linebacker, had the tight end Crawford by the jersey. There's the call. Let's see. Now I got him right by the left side of the ear hole. That's a good call. McCartney can't be real happy with that. He wants to talk to one of the officials about it. But Baylor has a first down at the CU 43. Wide open wide receiver. Joe overthrows him. It was John Stanley who had a good two or three yards of separation on the defensive back there. Stanley had a whale of a game last week against Fresno State. 131 yards in catches. Brings up second and ten for Baylor. A pitch to Lewis. He's run out at the 41. Now now Lee immediately tackle. Excuse me, that's Jackson. Randall Jackson. Three fifty to go, third quarter. They come out with that full house backfield. Three running backs behind J.J. Joe. This is straight, straight up the middle. Puts a few moves on and gets it down to the 25. Another Baylor first down. Liam Eady there again to stop him. And you might think third and nine that Baylor and the Baylor offense would stretch it and then pitch it. But this time they give the big fullback, Robert Strait, who breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. And then gets into the secondary and... Takes a lot to get him off his feet. Well, what a difference from the last time Baylor came in here a couple of years ago and upset CU 16 to 14. They try the middle again and get nowhere. Gary is howling to stop. Let's go down to the field and our Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks a lot, Les. You guys have been mentioning uh, Danelle Liamidi quite often. You know, last year he's a wide receiver wearing number 84. He caught a touchdown pass against Baylor. Now he's a defensive back and defensive backs coach. Greg Brown thinks he might have as much promise as any defensive back. He's just got a nose for the football. He's big, he's heavy, and he'll really come up and wallop you. They really like number three in the years to come at CU. Back up to you guys. And he has thrown a few wallops in this quarter. This is Jackson again. This time corralled by Ted Johnson. John Knutson also in on the tackle. The two inside linebackers for CU. Both juniors. And both of these guys played some as freshmen, although that year cut short by injuries to both. You can see Johnson gets there first, then Knutson. Both give them good size inside. 6'4 and 245 for Knutson, 6'4 and 235 for Johnson. 39 for Baylor. Jackson has the first down. Stays on his feet, down to the two-yard line. 
Well, you know right now the defense is thinking shut up. That has to be a little demoralizing. That is, just, again, just a straight lead play. An excellent job of blocking up front and good hard running by Jackson. He's hit there. Pretty good job by Dwayne Davis of trying to knock him off his feet, and all he did was spin him around. Baylor has been able to run the football today against Colorado more than Bill McCartney would have liked to have seen. First and goal from the two. Ooh. This is close. Let's see where this ball is placed. No touchdown signal yet. I think they're going to call it short of the goal line and second down. Bradford Lewis just couldn't squeeze it in. So that number right there is not going to work for Bill McCartney. 196 yards rushing by Baylor. That time, Baylor does get it in. The touchdown scored by the big fullback, Robert Strait. And although it doesn't matter in this game, Colorado's going to have to play better run defense if they're going to win the Big A championship. So Baylor gets its first points of the afternoon. 244-pound Robert Strait, the big fullback for Baylor, punches it in. Now the extra point attempt by Jarvis Van Dyke. He's got it. So Baylor avoiding the shutout here in Boulder. We're late in the third quarter. CU still leads it 42 to 7. 42 to 7, CU leading Baylor. We have a minute 23 to go in the third quarter. Baylor just scored its only touchdown of the afternoon, and the Bears will be kicking off, and they're lined up for an onside kick. And now they're spreading out. A little fake there. Let's see what they do with it. Atterbury puts it into the end zone. And James Kidd lets it go. So the Buffs will get the ball at their own 20 for the start of the drive. Here's Baylor's touchdown. Pretty good drive running the football. Robert Strait powers his way over left guard. 12 plays, 83 yards, most of which came on the ground almost five minutes off the clock. Vance Joseph in relief of Cordell Stewart, who's taking the second half off. He's the quarterback, Rashawn Salam, the running back on that play, and he gains three. Nothing Hamilton to stop. CU just keeps putting tailbacks in the game. Rashawn Salam, Lamont Warren, James Hill, they've got a stable full of backs, very capable of being the lone guy. And a wide receiver now for the bus, Kidd and Cunningham. If they try the middle, keeping it on the ground. Salam stopped by Chris Dull there. Salam picks up the first down again. Second nice afternoon running ball. Well, he's strong enough that you can run in between the tackles. You see right here, Salam just bounces off tacklers. Then gets the first down. Played eight-man football in high school. Well, with that much more space on the field, he must have been a terror. <laughs> and Rashawn's numbers on the day, 11 rushes for 43 yards. A lot of them very tough yards. We have an injured player on the field for Baylor. Malcolm Hamilton, the linebacker. And he gingerly walks off the field with the help of the training staff. 49 seconds to go, third quarter. Be sure to join us tomorrow night at 11.05 for Gary Miller's Sports Extra. That's right here on News 4. Gary will be joined by Broncos running back Reggie Rivers. The two of them will give you extra Broncos coverage with in-depth analysis of Sunday's big AFC West showdown between the Broncos and the San Diego Chargers. That's Gary Miller's Sports Extra, Sunday nights at 11.05 right here on News 4, your home for sports. And, of course, right before that, the Bill McCartney Show at 10.35. First down for the Buffs. 
Joseph throws it, and it's complete to the tight end, Desmond Dennis. He's stopped by Adrian Robinson. Well, Desmond Dennis was open on a play just like this earlier. Vance Joseph didn't see him. Dennis, you see, pretty good catch and a good job of holding onto the football. When he came to see you, they thought he'd be a linebacker. He's got a defensive player's mentality. With an offensive player's hands, and he'll play offense. That's his first college catch. Rashawn Salam. Finds a hole on the right, gains four yards. Daryl Gardner makes the tackle. We're going to take a break. See you leading it at the end of three. Here's your score as we start the fourth quarter. See you comfortably ahead of Baylor. And let's go down to the field and talk a little Broncos now with Mark McIntosh. Yeah, we're going to talk a little Broncos. We got the kicker and the punter here. Rookie kicker Jason Elam and rookie punter Tom Ruin. First, I got to ask Jason, you went to the University of Hawaii. First ball game you've ever seen here in Boulder. I know you uh, were anxious to see Ralphie run out of the shoot over here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Tom here is trying to make me into a CU fan, and uh, they look really good right now. And I know you, you like the timing here. The cheerleaders have moved down this way, and you guys come out on the field. Yeah, it was great timing. We got down here just in time. <laughs> What's it like rooming with a guy like Ruin? Now, you guys are roomies. Ah, yeah, he's the best. He keeps me, uh, you know, in tune for the game, and he gets me, uh, you know, ready for it. And, and uh, I think it's good to have somebody there that, you know, does the same thing, and we can get each other prepared. Hey, you guys stick close here. Les, back up to you right now. All right, Rashawn Salam takes the handoff. He gets five yards up to the 48. Tony Tubbs made the tackle. All right, Mac, let's go back to you and hear from Tommy Ruin. Yeah, let's hear from Tommy Ruin. Switch sides here for a second here. Tommy Ruin, you've got to be thrilled. Uh, I know you always dreamed of a, a chance to kick for the Broncos, and here you are coming back to your alma mater, and you're now a Broncos punter. Uh, it sure makes it nice to come back here. Uh, I love watching the Buffs, and I even love it more when I know I have a job right down the street. <laughs> All right, we're going to watch the play here. Let's take it. Second and six. Salam again. Across midfield, somebody loses their shoe again. Gets a couple of yards. Chris Lewis, the tackle. Salam, I believe he's lost the shoe both times today. Maybe a double knot would be in order. Brings up third and three for the Buffs. Under 14 minutes to go in the ballgame. See you really sticking it to Baylor this afternoon. 42 to 7 Buffs. Vance Joseph sees a defensive lineman in his face and gets rid of that ball quickly, but incomplete. Brings up fourth down. The Buffs will have to punt. Mitch Berger comes out. The fourth in a long line of All-American punters here at CU. The others, the man you just heard from, Tommy Ruin, now with the Broncos, Keith English, and Barry Helton. Quite a legacy. Burger to punt, Pierce Pagras to return it for Baylor. Burger gets off a high one. Pagras calls for the fair catch at his own 15. So that's where Baylor will start with it. 13.35 to go, fourth quarter. Well, five extraordinary days, a once-in-a-lifetime event. This official commemorative video of World Youth Day is now available at your front range Safeway stores. Stop by and pick up your copy and relive the Pope's visit here in Colorado. J.J. Joe still at quarterback for Baylor. The pitch goes to Jackson. And with three buffs trying to drag him down, he gets up to the 25. Looks like he has first down yardage, a gain of 10. Might be a couple inches short. And Donnell Liam Meaty makes this tackle. In the option game, your safety's become very, very important in run support. And if Liam Meaty doesn't make that tackle, if he misses initially, I think that's going to be a big game. So you need big, strong safeties, especially when you play in a predominantly run conference. conference. Robert Strait picks up the first down and a little more. Up to his own 35. 
Kenny Wilkins now in the game at free safety for the Buffs. He made the tackle. Freshman redshirt out of Mesa, Arizona. And another speedster. Well, through three quarters, this is the way it looks in the other statistical categories. Total yards, Buffs well ahead of Baylor. More than 230 yards ahead. J.J. Joe throwing deep. He has a man. It's John Stanley. At the CU 25, Maurice Enriquez finally brings him down. It's a good throw, and you can see the ball on the line. Not bad coverage, but enough area inside for 39 yards, and Baylor making their second decent drive in the second half. Enriquez was pretty good coverage on the outside. Looked like he may have been expecting some post help there, but a good throw nevertheless by J.J. Joe. A lot of youngsters, a lot of backups in the game now for CU. First down for Baylor at the Buffs 26. They run the option again. And squeeze a couple of yards out of it. Dennis Collier makes the tackle. One of a couple Buffs in there. Along with Ronnie Wolfworth. Under 12 minutes to go in this ballgame. Second and nine for the Bears. Little flare pass. And Lewis gets down to the Buffs 10 yard line. Bradford Lewis with a nice game before Alan Wilbon stops him, the freshman linebacker out of Dallas. This a well-devised screenplay off a lead fake, a tackle out in front, and Bradford Lewis decides he's going straight ahead. No dancing, no juking, right straight toward the goal line. Boy, the coaching staff is raving about Wilbon, who just made the tackle. Number one rated linebacker in the United States by some publications. He led his high school team in tackles as a freshman. All four years he led his high school team in tackles. They try in the middle. Randell Jackson inside the 10. Will bomb the tackle. It was just, just amazing to me how these kids come out of high schools these days and they jump right into a big time college football program and they have an impact on it. Alan Wilbon, six feet, 230. Right, what do you do with him, I ask you? What kind of an adjustment was it for you coming out of Wheat Ridge to see you? That was tough. It was tough. It's a different level. I think the athletes are that much better these days. Second and six. Joe wants to throw. He's got his man. Knocked out of bounds at the two yard line. Todd Crawford made the catch. And Wilbon there for the tackle again. Hey, Jeff Bruner in the ball game for CU at nose tackle. What a nice story. Against Baylor last year, Bruner was hurt. Tore knee ligament. Out for the year. They tried him at offensive line in the spring because Jeff thought he would lack mobility after the major knee surgery. But he came along so well that he wanted back in his nose tackle position. And he's playing it once again and playing it very well. The pitch to John Henry, touchdown Baylor. John Henry putting a few more points on the board for Baylor. Baylor here in the second half against predominantly second and third line players has put a couple of impressive drives on the CU defense. Jarvis Van Dyke, the extra point attempt. He nails it. So Baylor now with 14 points, but still not very close to CU. Baylor just scored its second touchdown of the afternoon. The Buffs still lead at 42-14. We've got 10-27 to go in the game. A 
Baylor's kicking unit spreads out. Atterbury to kick it off. And he nubs it on the ground. Ball still bouncing. The best do the smart thing. They try to fall on it. The ball might have popped loose. It did. Baylor recovers. A couple of buffs had their hands on the ball, tried to smother it, but it snuck out of there. Bill McCartney takes off the headset for a second, not very happy with this. The ball, James Kidd tries to pick up initially. You can see, then he tries to just cover it up and it sneaks right under his left hip. It looked like Jerry Robles, the linebacker, may have got the recovery. Bill McCartney said, you gotta catch this. Get out of the way, you gotta catch it. Number 31 is Derek Agnew. He had a chance to fall on that ball also and just couldn't find the handle. Baylor with the ball. At the 20, running the option. Joe keeps it and gets six yards out of that play. Then immediately makes the stop. J.J. Joe on the afternoon. He's completed a little better than 50% of his passes for 132 yards. Right now, Baylor with the ball on the CU 14. Second down, four to go. John Henry. First down and touchdown. Now the Boo Birds come out. I tell you, realizing that Baylor's kept in their first team offense, why not down by this amount? But the second team CU defense really has not performed very well. Loads of missed tackles. John Henry keeps running here, runs through the arm tackle. But Matt Russell went into the end zone. Baylor attempting to save face here with John Henry's help. They've knocked that lead in half. It was 42 to nothing, and with this extra point, if Van Dyke's make it, makes it, it'll be 42-21. He does. And we'll take a break. There's the man that scored the touchdown. touchdown here in the fourth quarter and all of a sudden it's 42 to 21 the Buffs lead and Dave no longer a blowout is it? Really isn't they've been kicking off here but I would watch the onside kick in this situation three scores down still 10 minutes to go. Pooch to give. This time kid hangs on and he'll return it up to his own 26 yard line. John Henry on the afternoon. 50 yards on the ground, and two touchdowns for the Bears. Well, it's just good running again. The power toss fullback leads up inside. Looks like he's going to be stopped, but cuts back, and John Henry is a powerful young man. Right, last week, he had two scores against Fresno State. Today, another couple. In now at quarterback for the Buffs, the third QB on the day, Duke Tobin. He hands off to Rashawn Salam up to the 34-yard line, a gain of seven for Salam. Justin still the tackle. Duke Tobin is a senior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, a marketing and business administration major. Done a little work last year for the Buffs as the third stringer. Completed 46% of his passes for 182 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Had a great game against Baylor in the second half last year, spelling the injured Cordell Stewart. Flags down. Last year against Baylor, Tobin completed 10 of 15 passes for 154 yards and a TD. Familiar name to NFL watchers. Vince and Dick Tobin for many years. Dead ball foul, false start on the offense, repeat second down. For many years, administrators with the Chicago Bears. Vince, the defensive coordinator for the Bears under Ditka. And Dick, the personnel director. Second and eight for CU. From its own 29. 
incomplete the intended receiver. I'm not very sure, but T.J. Cunningham got his hands on it. There were two receivers in the area. Yeah, it was definitely Cunningham because Tobin talking to Barnett, Norm Barnett, the former linebacker from Pueblo, talking about taking the route inside. This is a throw intended for the wide receiver all the way, and Norm Barnett a little wide on his underneath route. And actually attempts to catch the ball. Hey, if it's near you, go ahead and catch it. Brings up third and eight for the Buffs. This time they keep it on the ground. Salam with the first down and a little more. Up to the 44-yard line. Well, Rashawn Salam, we've talked a lot about him. Again, 205 pounds. When you hit him, you don't knock him backwards. He continues to drive forward. He takes shots but moves forward. That's strength and size. 17 carries, 81 yards. And most of those carries have been between the tackles. Buffs are well set at the running back position. They'll lose James Hill after this year, but Warren and Salam are back. First down at their own 43. The Buffs stay on the ground. Salam has to fight his way just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to the field now and get a report from Mark McIntosh. Mark? Yeah, unless you talk about the tailbacks, the uh, quality of talent back there is so deep that Nathan Campbell, a redshirt freshman who everybody thought might be the next Eric Bieniemy. He felt so alone at fourth team, he moved over to defense. He's now playing defensive back. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Second and nine, the Buffs with the ball at their own 44. 7.30 to go, fourth quarter. Tobin, complete to the tight end, Garrett Ford. His first catch of the year inside the Baylor 40. Well, that's a nice job by Duke Tobin, the misdirection. Watch him step back. As he comes to the right side, he'll step back underneath the guard and allow the guard to block out. Right there. Buys himself some time, then the throw right on the money. Ball at the Baylor 34. With the stretch, Ford got the ball down to the Baylor 34. Well, that's a lot of first downs by both clubs. 48 all together. Salam. Ooh. Picked up and slammed to the ground at the 30 by Chris Lewis. Chris Lewis, six foot two, 202 pounds. Well, Salam here bouncing outside, then tries to hop back inside to avoid the tackle. And while in the air, Lewis grabs him and dumps him. Buffs have the ball. The Baylor 30 with a 42 to 21 lead. Duke Tobin in the quarterback. Cordell Stewart started. Vance Joseph came on to start the third quarter. And Duke Tobin right now. That man carrying the ball was Derek Agnew. And I'm a little surprised at that. Derek Agnew is listed as a free safety for the Buffs. Well, so is Derek. Are you surprised, too? I sure wish they'd tell us these things. <laughs> Let's go down to the field. Maybe Mark McIntosh can explain it, Mark. Well, actually, Derek's been playing fullback. You know, he usually runs in the scout team. He's the guy I was talking about, the scout team member who mentioned that the defense was hitting harder than he's ever seen it. But at least now he's getting to play. This is James Hill trying the right tackle. He gets it down to the Baylor 21. And another CU first down. Starting their Saturday night parties early. Couldn't pick a better spot. Gorgeous day at Boulder. And here at Folsom Field. Hey! 
James Hill. Dragged down from behind by Tony Tubbs. Hill gets a couple of yards. James Hill out of Colorado Springs and Whitefield High School. He had his best game in the Fiesta Bowl game last year. Against Syracuse, he gained 109 yards. Second and nine for the Buffs. There's that man Agnew again. I've heard that somewhere before. A few years back. And about Sparrow. <laughs> I don't think they were related. And if Derek was related to him, I don't think he'd admit to it. There's that man Agnew again. Third and six for the Buffs. At the Baylor 17. Approaching the four-minute mark in this game. James Hill. Buffs trying to run that clock down. He gets a couple of yards. Tony Tubbs, the ball carrier. And you might hear some fans booing. And it's because they want the Buffs to go for it on fourth down. Instead, the Buffs bring the field goal unit out, and Justin Blake, number 30 for the Buffs, will get a shot of him. Justin Blake, a junior, will be attempting his first collegiate field goal. There's Mr. Blake. And this is a 33-yard attempt. And it's good. Justin Blake, the first field goal of his college career. We're going to take a break as CU ups its lead to 45 to 21. The Justin Blake field goal. The Wolves go up on Baylor 45 to 21. We've got 3:21 to go in the fourth quarter, and Blake will be kicking off also. Well, Mitch Berger got plenty of work in today. Why not give Blake a shot? The junior out of Belleville, Washington, puts it down to the three-yard line. Jackson with a hole on the right. Right out of bounds at his own 37. Let's go down to the field with Mark McIntosh. Hey, Celeste, Justin Blake, first time he's ever appeared in a ball game for the Colorado Buffaloes. Before this, his claim to fame really was two years ago during media day. He is a real big fan of Harry Connick Jr. And you ought to hear this guy sing. He can sing just like Harry Connick Jr. So that's a little bit of tidbit on the guy. He's got a good singing voice and not a bad kicking leg. Back up to you guys. Well, maybe we'll have him on uh, halftime one game. We can hear how good he is. J.J. Joe's pass incomplete. Intended for Todd Crawford, the tight end. Some scores from around the nation. Number one ranked Florida State. I think it's safe to say they'll stay ranked number one. 57 to nothing. Notre Dame upsets Michigan in Michigan. 27-23. Alabama over Vanderbilt. 17-6. Nebraska comes back from a 21-20 deficit. Now leading Tech. 36-21. J.J. Joe hasn't had enough punishment today. He keeps the ball. And some more scores for you. Iowa State of the Big 8, a loser to in-state rival Iowa, 31-28. Mizzou leading Illinois big time in the fourth quarter, 24-3. Mizzou will be the Big 8 opener for CU. Michigan State leading Kansas, 14-2 in the second quarter. Baylor third and six at its own 40. J.J. Joe finally gets the pass off. Nobody near it. He did one heck of a Houdini act, but all for naught. Baylor clipped on the play also. There are flags down. <laughs> there should be. <laughs> the 
You got it right, Mr. Logan. So March Baylor back a few yards. And one more score to show you. In the WAC, Hawaii leading Brigham Young in the fourth quarter, 35-31. Just your typical WAC score. Flipping on the offense. Spot on the foul. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. So adding insult to injury, Baylor is now back at its own 10-yard line. Third and 37. It doesn't get much longer than that. Baylor will play it safe. John Henry across the 15. That will bring up fourth down and very long. And Baylor will punt. Approaching the two minute warning. Shuff the punter. And for the first time back to receive the punt, T.J. Cunningham for the buffs. A nice punt. Gets the wind underneath this one. T.J. in his own 33. And call it a one-yard return. Dave, with the um, lull in the action, this might be a good time to ask you a question I've been meaning to ask you for quite a while. Sure, Les. Um, Dave, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the response to that would be, well, that's a bizarre question. <laughs> Second half really has deteriorated, hasn't it? <laughs> First down for the Buffs at their own 35. Duke Tobin hands off to Salam. Call it a loss of one. Under 120 to go. See you leading it, 45 to 21. Next week, Buffs have a tough one. They travel to Palo Alto, California to take on Bill Walsh and his Stanford Cardinal. And the week after that, the University of Miami, right here at Folsom Field. Well, with Michigan losing, I'm wondering if CU is going to move up in the rankings. They're ranked 10th right now, Michigan ranked third, and a loser to Notre Dame today. So I'm not happy about that one. Another loss, Steve Strahan throws him. Michigan would fall enough for CU to uh, overtake them in the rankings? I don't know. I well, doubt close it. Notre Dame, a highly ranked yeah, team. Notre Dame holds a lot of prestige in the country. I don't think Michigan would drop to about seven or eight. Time out on the field. Here are some of the people that are bringing you these sights and sounds from Channel 4. Another great job, guys. Two seconds to go, fourth quarter. This game's been well in hand since, I would say, the second quarter. Did you want to tell people why you proposed me in the air? No. I, I think they know. It's okay. <laughs> it's because I love you. <laughs> oh, my. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> I gotta get a raise. <laughs> I gave you a ring. What more do you want? Third down for the Buffs. Duke Tobin throwing deep. There's a surprise. Overthrows the speedy receiver, James Kidd. I wonder how Baylor feels about that. With all due respect, run the ball. It's <laughs> third and 16, you're up 45-21. Let's get out of here. Run the ball. Everybody wants to leave, including us. 
Brings up fourth down, and CU will punt. Mitch Berger will punt it. His numbers have been down these first couple of games. Last week, he averaged 40 yards on seven punts. Today, he's averaging a little over 35 yards on two punts. Cross field. Dropping the ball is Jason Burt, excuse me, Pierce Pagras of Baylor. He falls on it at his own 23. So Baylor will run out the clock with 27 seconds to go. Total yardage on the afternoon, CU has racked up 540. Baylor 358, the majority of that on the ground. J.J. Joe and the Bears have not been very effective at all trying to throw the ball today. Over the top for Baylor goes Khalif Muhammad, his first carry of the day. He's a freshman from Texas. Under 10 seconds to go. This will be the last play of the game if Baylor gets it off. That's it. The final gun sounds at Folsom Field. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh will try to talk to head coach Bill McCartney. Well, this might be the toughest thing of the day. Bill McCartney, of course, will go out to uh, midfield and shake hands with Chuck Reedy. And we're heading that way. I imagine he's got to be very satisfied to pick up their second victory of the year. But I think he's going to be a little disappointed. You guys talked about the fact that they gave up a lot of rushing yards to the Baylor Bears. I think maybe they concentrated so much on shutting down the play-action pass with J.J. Joe that they had uh, maybe neglected shutting down the running attack of the Baylor Bears in the second half especially, but like you guys talked about, uh, the second-string defense for the CU bus was on the field a lot. We are live here with Coach Bill McCartney. Talk about the positives first. You got to play a lot of guys. You were very opportunistic with their turnovers in the first half. Right. I thought first half we were real good and had very few mistakes. Second half was pretty sloppy and not what you want, but a lot of guys played. Do you think maybe you guys were concentrating so much on shutting down the play action pass with J.J. Joe that uh, maybe neglected the running game a little bit? They had a lot of yards. No. Rushing. No. I don't think that. What, were you, what are your thoughts about the running game? They did a pretty good job moving the ball on. We did a good job of stopping the run for the most part, and then just score got out of hand, and that... Got so, up here. Score got out of hand, and then well, we weren't as sharp. But I mean, we got work to do defensively. But no, I don't think that that we defended the overly defended the pass and more vulnerable to run. We just got to get off blocks better. Like you were mentioning, a lot of young guys got to play. James Kidd got his first touchdown. Justin Blake got in and got to kick a field goal. It's good to see some young kids play. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. Everybody works hard, and when you get an opportunity to play everybody, you want to do that. All right, good luck against the Stanford Cardinals. All right, thanks, man. Coach Bill McCartney, of course, his team now 2-0 on the season, and next week they go out to Palo Alto, California, to take on the Stanford Cardinal. You might remember two years ago, Les, they went out there. The Buffs were expected to win. They did not play very well, did not play very well out there. They were flat and lost to Stanford. Of course, they want to avoid any type of letdown. They don't want to be looking past Stanford. They got Miami the following week, September 25th, right here. But first and foremost, they got to take on a tough Stanford Cardinal team out in California. Back up to you. All right, thanks, Mark. And remember, tomorrow night, you can see both Max, McIntosh, and McCartney on the Bill McCartney Show talking about this ball game and a look ahead at 1035 on Channel 4. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Well, the game just ended here in Boulder at Folsom Field. CU put the hurt on the Baylor Bears. And, Dave, I think uh, passing, running, the Buffs offense, it all worked today, and it worked pretty early. Well, the important thing is they didn't have turnovers in the first half, and Cordell Stewart, when you give him that kind of protection, is a very accurate thrower. You add to that mix that the running game is already better now in the second game of the 1993 season than it was all of last year. So I, I think this offense has the potential to be the best in school history. They've got a lot of great players, young players, and we'll find out if they can take that next step next Saturday when they go to Palo Alto, and that'll be a tough test, I think, for CU against Stanford. It was also reconfirmed today what a great athlete Charles Johnson is, along with Michael Westbrook and Cordell Stewart. It doesn't get much better than it does with that trio. 
Well, I don't think it gets any better with college receivers. I, I think that's the best tandem in college football. And then you add, again, a quarterback like Cordell Stone with the arm strength and savvy he has. This is a very difficult offense to defend. Charles Johnson with three touchdowns on the day. And so the final score from Boulder is CU 45, the Baylor Bears 21. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game is produced by Terry Trevato and directed by Tom Richards. Our engineer in charge is Doug Houston. And the next televised game for CU is on October 9th when the Buffs take on the University of Missouri.